One of the things that is true for a deacon is that we are a minister of both the community and the altar. And for me, each and every day at Catholic Charities, we have the opportunity to serve the poor and the vulnerable of the church. So a good day for us is whether we've been able to help you with what you desired or not, you know that you've been touched by something very different. Our Catholic Charities, I, they are another arm of each parish to help them to be able to fulfill the needs of the people they serve every day. When I had to stop working because of my dialysis, um, I found that Catholic Charities had really grown. They took their time helping me in what I needed, helped me get back on my feet, helped me stay with a roof over my head. Thank you. Really, thank you. Thank you for the organization that has helped me and opened up their hearts and their homes and their church to me. I feel like I may be the only smile that they see all day. So I treat them like their guests in my home. There has never been a time where one of our recipients hasn't been grateful for what we have to offer them. My daughter was uh, a survivor of the Sandy Hook school shooting. When Uvalde occurred, I knew that I had something that could be helpful. What I came to discover was that they were deploying. Their, their teams were heading there, but that they weren't really sure what to do, how to handle it. I knew that they needed to come up to speed as quickly as possible because this awful tragedy was unfolding all around them. For the children who were lost and their families, for the children who survived, the faster you get in there and begin to help them process what they experienced, the higher likelihood that they're going to have a better outcome. And keeping in contact, I know they implemented a lot of the suggestions that I made for them. I was 19 when I got pregnant, and I was 19 when I had the abortion. I knew it was, it was a sin, and yet I had to agree with my mother who said, there's no way you can possibly have this child. And you know, the emotional pain has been there always. They do not forgive themselves. They say, the abortion is too much. This is the unthinkable. So how he's gonna forgive me? And I say, we well, forget the divine mercy. It took me 20 plus years to find a place where I can feel I can start to heal. Meeting people and talking about it, I was liberating. And there was so much compassion too. But I do have faith that by doing what I'm doing, like coming to church, getting involved, especially in Project Racial because it's dear to me. And that's part of making amends. The idea is if we're gonna be pro-life people, we have to really kind of put our money where our mouth is. We gotta get out there and help moms who need help. As you guys can see, <laughs> the outpour of support was incredible. We all journey as a community and we help one another. That's our Christian call. I have a two children and I have a twins in my belly, so it's a good blessing for me. I'm very grateful and so thankful for my experience with the coalition because that's how I was able to meet you guys, Catholic Charities. We were basically going apartment searching and hunting together. We were also looking up employment for me. Now that we are stable, it's nothing but happiness and sunshine and blessings on top of blessings. Like, I cannot be any more grateful. What I am privileged to do as president would not be possible were it not for my relationship with Jesus. The creation and provision of affordable housing remains at the top of our ministry priorities. And it's simply because we have such a demonstrated need here in Central Florida. Food, inflation is building on top of what happened during the pandemic, is building on top of the lines that existed before the pandemic. We need to remind ourselves, you know, wherever there's needs, the church has to be there, and that's where Catholic Charities works for the church.